<laughs> no. Those things ended up being the best things in my life. There is no good or bad, which means there is no right or wrong. wrong. No such thing. These are lies we have been told our whole lives. And the last one is, mm, this one's going to upset you. <laughs> Your fears don't keep you safe. They hold you back. They're not real. Fear is not a gift. Fear is the ego trying to keep you from something that you think keeps you safe. How many of you think the most frightening thing to do is to do what I'm doing right now and get up here and talk to people? <laughs> There's a few. But again, I don't have any special abilities. When I was a little kid, I was put in front of adults and had to talk. It wasn't an unusual thing. I was an only child. My parents were considerably older. Their whole lives were adults. So my whole life, except for school, was adults. I always did it. When I was in like junior high, I became the spokesperson for the teen group in my parents' boat club. It wasn't a yacht club, it was just a basic boat club, trust me, I was a water skier. And I became the spokesman because I could go up and stand at the adult meetings and stand at the lectern and give a report of what the kids were doing without falling over. It's not that I have a special ability, I've just always done it. I didn't think it was scary, so it's not scary to me. Might not be good, but it's not scary. <laughs> but all these beliefs hold our attention. And they keep us from the truth of our being, the truth of our higher selves. Which is we are all one. Jenny talked about it. That's all there is. There isn't you and me. We keep trying to get to this concept. I know we look like little skin encapsulated beings, but it's not the truth. It's this duality in this physical plane. The truth is we are one mind. We are one spirit. So how has this happened? I mean, I think I've mentioned a few things. In school, how many teachers do we have here? A couple. They're raising their hands. A couple. <laughs> What do you do in school? You give out what? Grades. <clears throat> Grades. This is one of the training tools that taught us on better or worse. Sports. Winners and losers. And we love sports, don't we? Some of us. Punishment. Get punished. I was punished for pounding on the keys on the piano. So I didn't think I could do that. Punishment has shown us this. Praise. Don't we all love praise? Yes. That's the fun one. So if you get praised for something you think you're good at it, you go out and you do more of it. Whether it's true or not. And I already mentioned comparisons. This is how we get to this concept of duality. Ego wants us to believe we are separate. But we're not. You're not separate, you're not different, you're not special. Sorry! The truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. <laughs> if you could truly understand that you are not separate, you are not different, and you are not special, your heart bursts open. And isn't that what we all want? So now I'm going to tell you the truth. I gave you six lies, now I'm going to tell you six truths. The first truth is, you bought into these lies, hook, line, and sinker. You've been believing them your whole life. You have been domesticated. We do it with our children, don't we, Tamara? We have to. You have been domesticated. But it's not the truth. And it's time for you as adults, everyone sitting in here is an adult, and it's time for you as an adult to come to the realization of this truth. All this has been keeping you in bondage. It's not keeping you free. We are free. You did that. We are free. I am free. 
but this crap is keeping you in bondage. When you really see your oneness and see that everyone is exactly like you and that everyone has the same divine connection, then you will feel and really get that we are all one. Um, Kasturba Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's wife. Does anybody know the story about Kasturba? Kasturba, you know, sat married to this man who went through tremendous change in his life. And towards, around the middle of his life, not towards the end, but around the middle of his life, they built this community in India that was a, a oneness community. And his concept was that they needed to get rid of this caste system. This was Gandhi's thing. The caste system where people who clean floors and toilets and streets will always, their children will always do that. You can never move out of your caste system. Upper level people always do the upper level stuff. Lower level people do the lower level stuff. Well, Kasturba was from a very high upper echelon. And Gandhi said, in our community, everyone does all the chores. And she put her foot down and said, I'm not cleaning the toilets. She put her foot down for years. And in the end, it was actually breaking Gandhi's heart that he had put his wife through so much pain in even suggesting that she clean the toilets, knowing that the truth was is that everyone was equal. Everyone was the same. It took her years. But she finally came to understand that cleaning the toilets wasn't something that a lowly did. It was a gift to God because it was a gift to her community. And she started cleaning the toilets. And she did it as a sacred service. Spirit honors willingness is truth number three. If you are just willing to try. If you are willing to shift your thinking a little bit, spirit will respond. Spirit will support you. God doesn't want a bunch of unhappy, messed up people running around. <laughs> Do you like that? Do you like feeling that? Do you like being that? No. Because I gotta tell you, if it feels good, it's right. Oh, I know, there's Puritan ideals, and we've taken that in different contexts. But what makes us feel good, what uplifts us, is the right thing. And that's true. Practice changing your thinking. What have we taught in religious science all these years? Change your thinking, change your life. Stop thinking you're separate. Stop thinking you're different. Stop thinking you're better or worse. Change your thinking. Change your life. We have a wonderful tool. I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, or well, a month ago when I did this the last time. <coughs> I mentioned Ho'oponopono. And we taught this and talked about it for a long time. It is such a simple, easy little tool to use. It's a Hawaiian tool for those of you who haven't heard it before. And what it is, is four statements. Something goes on in your life. Some idiot cuts you off in traffic. And what do you do? You get scared, right? I mean, the reaction might look like anger, but it's really fear of what you know could happen. Am I right? OK, so there's only two emotions, love and fear. So we go into fear. It might outpicture as anger. Quickly, as possible, I love you. Have you ever done that to somebody else? Have you ever cut off somebody? Oh. <laughs> I think so. Yep. Yep. Have you ever done anything dumb that somebody got mad at you for? Yep. So instead of reacting, I love you. I'm sorry. What am I sorry for? For my reaction, my judgment. Please forgive me. They might not even know you're doing this. Me. Forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Simple little tool. Use it. 
Two more, we'll be done. Fear, I already mentioned it, it's not real. False evidence appearing real. Fear is not real, it's made up. You made up your fears or you were handed them. My mother handed me my fear of heights. I know it for a fact. My mother was deathly afraid of heights. I mean, I have some funny stories. We were overlooking a waterfall. I think we might have been in Zion National Park. I don't really remember. We went on these great road trips all over the place when I was a kid. But there's an overlook of a waterfall. There was a, a rock face behind and this very wide path. It was at least from here to Maggie, at least that far. And then a railing on that. And the waterfall was coming down, and you got to lean over and watch the water go down to the bottom of this rather tall waterfall. My mother was plastered <laughs> to the rock. I can see it from here. <laughs> we did fun things to my mom. <laughs> my dad took her. We lived in San Diego. I have to tell this quick aside because it's a funny story. My dad took her. Um, in San Diego, has anybody ever flown into the San Diego airport or been around where the planes come into the San Diego airport? Well, the planes have to come over this hill right before they drop down into the airport. And they come very close to the hill. They have to be very experienced pilots to go in and out of San Diego. And my dad worked on this hill outdoors. He worked for the phone company. He was a cable splicer. So he would worked on this hill for a couple of weeks. And these planes kept coming. I mean, they're like this far away. I'm serious. They're as high as the ceiling. They are not much further if you're on the top of that hill when they come over. So on Saturday, my dad says, let's go for a little ride. And we go for this little ride. And we go up to the hill. And he goes, isn't the view beautiful? And a plane comes overhead. And I heard it. And I looked at my dad. And he looked at me. My mother dove into a bush. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> she dove into a juniper. It, uh, it, yeah, oh, we used to do that. <laughs> Every thought is a prayer. <laughs> That's the next one. <laughs> Number six, the way out of this, truly believe. Believe. Don't just get it up here. Get it down inside of you. It doesn't mean you're not going to have a negative thought. It doesn't mean you're not going to go into fear. Catch yourself faster. Catch yourself sooner. Believe, understand, really live that every thought is a prayer. And ask yourself, is this what I want? Something goes through your head. Is this what I want? Just check yourself. Every doubt, every frustration, and every blessing, remember, all you have to do is <laughs> <laughs>